Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Before we start this video, I just wanted to mention that only 20% of you are subscribed, so if you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing to support the channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing Harry Potter and a certain ability that he possesses throughout the books and films. Now, if you will allow me to massively overstate something, it's the fact that Voldemort and Harry shared a connection. It was a connection they shared for most of Harry's life. In fact, it was a connection that lasted from the year 1981 all the way to the end of the Second Wizarding War, when Voldemort was finally defeated. The events of the night of October 31st, 1981 were tragic. It was during the First Wizarding War, and Voldemort was arguably at his strongest. All of his dark endeavours had gone rather successfully for him, and he had amassed quite the legion of followers. It was on this fateful night that Voldemort stumbled into the Potter's humble home in Godric's Hollow, seeking out the Potters in an attempt to stop Sybil Trelawney's prophecy from coming true. He travelled there with one goal in mind, kill the boy, kill Harry Potter. When he entered the Potter residence, his first obstacle was James Potter, who Voldemort made quick work of. Next, he began making his way towards Lily and baby Harry. However, what I'm sure Voldemort didn't expect that night was that he would be defeated. Voldemort asked Lily to step aside, offering to spare her life if she would allow him to have Harry. Unsurprisingly, she refused Voldemort's offer and was subsequently murdered by his killing curse. Next, Voldemort advanced towards Harry, letting out one final Avada Kedavra for the night with the hopes of putting an end to the boy. However, what Voldemort didn't know was that Lily had placed a loving sacrifice on Harry, an ancient and powerful form of magical protection. When Voldemort used Avada Kedavra, it instantly rebounded and was deflected back at him. The rebounding curse effectively split Voldemort's soul, but because his body was gone, destroyed by the curse, the soul fragment could not be encased to complete the Horcrux creation. Part of Horcrux creation involves an encasing spell, which actually puts the soul outside of the body into a physical object. Because Voldemort's soul was left without any attachment, it lashed itself to Harry. For this reason, Harry contained Voldemort's soul fragment, but was never possessed by it. If we look at Voldemort's Horcruxes, we know that they are often characteristically similar to Voldemort, because they contain parts of his soul. They are evil objects that you generally want to stay away from. However, Harry was sort of an exception. He wasn't a traditional Horcrux and didn't get all of the characteristics of a Horcrux, but he certainly got some. One of the most notable abilities that Harry got after Voldemort's murder attempt was the ability to speak Parseltongue. He became a Parselmouth. If you didn't know already, a Parselmouth is one who is able to speak Parseltongue, the language of snakes. It's a hereditary trait that is passed on through descendants of Salazar Slytherin, which Voldemort happened to be. It's widely accepted that Salazar was the original Parselmouth, but others have speculated that it may in fact have been Herpo de Fowl, the original Horcrux creator, who lived before Salazar Slytherin's era. Either way, descendants of Salazar himself carry this trait, which is probably why the connection is so strong between Slytherin House and Snakes. Is their house emblem after all? Harry first discovers that he's able to speak to snakes in the zoo in a philosopher's stone. At that point in time, he was entirely ignorant to magic in its entirety, and so everything that was happening to him was shocking enough. However, it is only later on that Harry actually discovers that being a parcel mouth is quite a unique trait. You see, when he speaks parcel tongue and speaks to snakes, to an outside observer, he's speaking the language of snakes. But to Harry, all he hears is himself speaking normally. When he finally finds out that it's a unique ability, he's quite surprised. From the Chamber of Secrets. So, said Harry, I bet loads of people here can do it. Oh no, they can't, said Ron. It's not a very common gift, Harry. This is bad. And while the ability to speak to snakes, being a parcel tongue, isn't innately bad, there's definitely a certain amount of stigma surrounding it. Salazar Slytherin, the man most commonly associated with parcel tongue, was a strong proponent of having only pure-blood students at Hogwarts. This philosophy was not particularly welcomed by Hogwarts, which led to his eventual ousting. However, it also led to Salazar's creation of the Chamber of Secrets, a secret chamber in the school housing a basilisk, intended to purge the school of Muggleborns and Half-Bloods. Harry wasn't sure what made him do it. He wasn't even aware of deciding to do it. All he knew was that his legs were carrying him forward, so he was on the casters and that he had shouted stupidly at the snake, leave him, and miraculously, inexplicably, the snake slumped to the floor, docile as a thick black garden hose, its eyes now on Harry. Harry felt the fear drain out of him. 
He knew the snake wouldn't attack anyone now, though how he knew it, he couldn't have explained. When it was discovered that Harry could speak parcel tongue, he was immediately judged by the student body, and it was the general consensus among students that Harry was responsible for opening the chamber in that same year. When Rita Skeeter found out about Harry's ability, she told the whole world, which didn't help the public opinion of Harry. Even Ron, Harry's best friend, found it to be creepy. And it turns out that parcel tongue, though most commonly a hereditary trait, can actually be learned as well. In an interview, Rowling revealed that Albus Dumbledore had been able to master parcel tongue over the course of his life, and could understand it well. He was just unable to speak it aloud. Why Albus learned it in the first place is unclear, but he was a man of many talents who really didn't set limitations on himself, so I'm really not too surprised. Anyway, back to Harry. He could speak Parseltongue for most of his life, and he was tied to Voldemort for a very long time because Voldemort's soul fragment lived inside of him. This same soul fragment was responsible for Harry's ability to speak Parseltongue. So when Voldemort died, and the soul fragment inside of Harry was gone, did it result in Harry losing his ability to speak to snakes? On Pottermore, this is addressed. Harry being an accidental horcrux meant he was bound to Voldemort in so many ways, just like Voldemort was bound to serpents. Not only could Harry speak the language of the snake, but could see through the eyes of Nagini, another of Voldemort's horcruxes, as it turned out. Once the part of Voldemort's soul that dwelt inside Harry was destroyed, however, Harry discovered he was no longer a parsonmouth an added bonus of Voldemort's demise. However, just because Harry was no longer a parcel mouth, it doesn't mean that he didn't have any retained knowledge of parcel tongue. A parcel mouth generally refers to someone who can speak the language, where parcel tongue is a language itself. Dumbledore, for example, knew the language but couldn't speak it. What this tells me is that even though Harry lost the ability to speak parcel tongue, he probably still had a pretty good understanding of it and I expect that he could probably still understand what snakes were saying to him, even if he couldn't talk back. There's no reason that Harry would suddenly forget some of the words that he uttered in Parseltongue, like open, which he used on many occasions. So Harry can no longer speak it, fair enough, looks like this is addressed, but can he still understand it? In my opinion, most likely. What do you guys think? Do you think that Harry lost it altogether? Or are you with me in thinking that he can still understand it, but just can't speak it? Let me know down in the comment section below. Until next time, you're a wizard Harry. <laughs>